Well, good evening. We're glad that you are a part of our Wednesday night Bible study at First Baptist Church. Thank you for watching or listening or being on the internet with the YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you being a part of our services. If you have your Bible, you can open up to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to continue with the armor of God. And uh, last week we looked at the, the belt of truth, how that holds everything together, the truth of the gospel as we think about our lives. And tonight we're going to be looking at the breastplate of righteousness. And so uh, as we begin, I do want to encourage you, if you can, to be here this Sunday with us at First Baptist Church uh, for our morning service. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. And if you're looking for a church home, I can't think of a better church to be at than First Baptist, so I hope that you'll come and be a part of the church family. Also remind you uh, of things that are going on. Remember, God and Country Day will be July the 5th, so please keep that in mind. As we move toward that, we will celebrate that on the 5th of July. Remember those that are sick in our church family and lift them up to the Lord, be in prayer for them and, and praying for those that are hurting and broken, uh, going through some tough times. So be in prayer for our country as well. So let's begin with a word of prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house, to be able to open your word and study it. And I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts. And I pray that, Lord, we would realize that every day of our life, we need to put on the armor so that we can stand against our enemy. And I pray tonight that Lord, you would forgive us of our sins, of our shortcomings, and Lord, just cleanse our hearts that we might draw closer to you. As someone said to me this week, I just want to get closer to Jesus, and I pray that that would be all of our prayers, that we just want to get closer to Jesus. Lord, I, I thank you for what you do for us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you are a God that hears our prayers and answers them, and Lord, I thank you when it's affirmative, and I thank you even when you say no. Because I know it's in our best interest. Lord, guide us, direct us as we study. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin reading with verse 14 again. He says, Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If you want to find a reference that Paul would have been using right here, Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 17 is, is a verse that talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. And maybe this is the verse that Paul was thinking about as he, as he had this. Now the breastplate, and I want you to understand that that belt of truth that he was talking about went around, and then the next piece of armor that a Roman soldier would put on would be the breastplate. Now the breastplate would cover the front and the back, and it would go from the neck to the thighs, and it would cover the vital organs. That was the purpose of the breastplate to protect the vital organs of the soldier as he went into battle. Now, we know what's the vital. We're talking about our heart, lungs, uh, those things that are vital to our survival. And so when he talks about putting on the breastplate, that's exactly the piece of armor that he's talking about putting on. As a matter of fact, if you have your Bible, turn over to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and, and he tells us why we need to put that breastplate of righteousness on. Why that is so important? Because he says, keep thy heart with all diligence. In other words, man, you, you need to protect your heart. You need to guard your heart. He says, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, the way you live will come out through your heart. Your heart reveals who you are. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said these words, uh, beginning with verse 18 and 19. Listen to what Jesus said uh, as well in talking about the heart. 
15, Matthew 15, 18, and 19. And he says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. They defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murder, uh, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Now, I want you to realize and to understand that we need to protect our hearts because it's out of our heart comes the passions, the lust, uh, the way we're going to live our life. And now when Paul talks about righteousness here, he is talking to Christians. He's not talking about the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Because that's settled once and for all. Once we truly put our faith in Jesus Christ, that's settled. But we as the people of God, and as I said, he was writing to Christians, we struggle daily living the way God would have us to live. And so what he's talking about is living the right way. You want to protect your heart so that you can live the right way. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. And again, listen to, to uh, the things that, that Paul says to us in verse 24. And he says, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness, that you and I would live our lives the right way, the way God wants us to live, that we would live separated lives, that we would live the way that he would have us to live. God always does the right thing. And God wants us to always do the right thing. He wants our lives to be what they ought to be. Because the way we live is a light. It's a reflection of Jesus. A few weeks back, we were looking at being like Jesus, being conformed to the image of Jesus, so that we would live in a way that's practical, that, that we would have the, the qualities that Jesus would have us to live in our lives. Now, if you don't protect your heart, you know what's going to happen? You're not going to walk the way he wants you to walk. You're going to start living like the world. You're going to start saying, it's all right. You can do this. Uh, and you begin to put God's word to the side. So it's important when Satan begins to come against us, he wants to get us to begin to think, to compromise, to change the truth so that uh, we don't live the way that God would have us to live. And so we want to protect our lives. We need to stay focused every day of our life, focused on living righteously, doing what's right, doing what God wants us to do, to be focused, to be zeroed in. You know, not looking to the left, not looking to the right, but being focused on living like God would have us to live. Isn't it amazing how distracted we can get in this world that we live in? To not do the things that he would have us to do, to not do the practical things that God wants us to do. I mean, it's so easy to, to get distracted and to find yourself compromising the things that God wants you to do. I think one of the great dangers in, in today, and we see this, is that people have compromised about living and doing what the Word of God says, about living the way God wants us to live in our lives. And so we need to stay focused. We need to be sure that we are living the way God wants us to live. People need to learn that there's a better way to living, not the way of this world, but the way that he would have us to live. That's the greatest way to live. Living the way that God would have us to live each day of our life. Living righteously. Living holy lives. Living lives that show that we've been set apart. And so we protect it. 
We protect that heart. We do everything that we can to keep that from happening. You know, I, I think one of the things that is being born again, it's evident by the way we live our lives that we develop this character, this righteous way of life, living right. It's, it's just it's something that we develop. You know, you don't wake up one morning and all of a sudden you're doing everything the right way. You're not living the practical life that God wants you to live. But it's something that you strive every day of your life. You put on that armor to protect your heart so that you will live the way that God wants you to live. That you can live with the, the purity that he would have you to live with, with the integrity and the holiness that God wants you to have in life. If you don't protect it, let me tell you, there, there are so many ways that Satan can begin to get your heart to change. And you begin to compromise. You begin to take away from the integrity and in doing what's right in a practical sense. Someone's going to say, well, how, do, how does that happen in life? Well, sometimes that can be that we allow people to influence us. Sometimes the influence of other people will lead us down a path that we know we should not be walking down, but yet we do. And so we always want to be careful. We want to guard that the right influence is in our hearts, that we don't let the wrong influence get in there. You know, it's when people want to begin to compromise the truth of God's Word, and they say, well, you know, it's not a big deal. When you hear somebody say it's not a big deal, you better run because that's a step toward compromising your heart, toward doing what's right. The lack of Bible study. If you don't read God's Word, how are you going to know what God wants us to do in life? You know, it's, it's kind of like, let me use this as an example, but he tells us that we ought to be like a light and we don't hide it under a bushel. But a light that shines and reflects the righteousness and the holiness of God by the way we live. And if we allow sin to stay in our hearts and we allow sin to rule in us, then we're not going to live that practical, that holy life. We're not going to be living the way he would have us to live. So you want to be on guard. You want to watch. i tell you something else I think that we need to be very careful of. Because that is the things that we watch and we listen to. The more you hear something over and over again, the more it can lead you astray. The more you hear it. You know, we live in a world today where more and more and more and more things are being shown about homosexuality. Commercials are even demonstrating it. Well, how long does it take before somebody begins to say, well, you know, maybe it's not a big deal. Listen, that's against God. It's against God's Word. So you don't want to understand the influences that come in and begin to take away the truth of God's Word. Realizing and understanding that we're manifesting the righteous character that God would have us to show before the world that we live in. They need to see that. And if I don't guard my heart, if I don't guard my life, because out of it becomes, comes the issues of life. In other words, out of my heart comes the way I live my life, the way I uh, go forth each day. If I don't guard it, I'm going to find myself falling and falling away from what God would have me to do and want. God wants us to live righteously. God wants us to live the way that he's called us to live. He wants us to live it every day. This isn't something you just live on Sunday, but it's something that you live every day. So that's why Paul is saying, put on that armor, guard your heart every day because it's an everyday affair. I heard a story about Jack Nicholas and... Uh, Gerald Ford, who was the president at that time, and Billy Graham, and another pro golfer 
we're going to go play golf. And uh, as soon as they finished the round, another golfer went up to the other golfer and said, man, what was it like playing golf with Billy Graham and understanding that? And the man said angrily, I don't need religion thrown down my throat. And he grabbed up his clubs, he went to the practice tee, and he began to hit golf balls. His friend followed him to the tee. And he said, in a few moments after he'd watched his friend hit some balls, he said, uh, have you calmed down a little bit? He said, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for the way I acted. And he said, was it that hard playing with Billy Graham? Did he really just preach at you on every hole? And his friend looked at him sheepishly and said, Billy Graham never mentioned anything about religion. It was the way he's living his life that made me so mad. Well, you know, Billy Graham was manifesting what it meant to guard your heart. He was manifesting what it meant to walk with God and to be faithful and true to God and, and to live the way that God would have you to live. He, he understood that. And we need to understand that. Because we live in a dark world, and that world needs to see God's people living and doing the right things as, they, as we go through each day of our life. Because I promise you this, people do watch you if you're a child of God. People look to see how you live your life. And, and the way you live it, they'll make a comment about that. So I want, I want you to think about it. I want you to be challenged about your heart. I want you to, to really contemplate about what kind of life are you manifesting? What, how is your life impacting other people? How do you impact people that you come in contact with? When they see your life, I mean, are they looking at a life that's different? Or do they see a life that's just like their life? They ought to see something that's different. The way we live our life truly impacts people. And we need to realize it. Sometimes it's more about how we live than what we say. Because of the impact of our actions that people watch. Anybody can say anything. But it's something else to put it into practice. I heard a story about a little boy playing baseball and uh, he was trying to stretch his head into a double and uh, got to second base the umpire caught him safe and the little boy looked at the umpire and walked away and he said I was out he said I wasn't at the bag when he tagged me and he walked off the field and the umpire said I've never seen that displayed in my life. And I thought that's the way we ought to live our lives every day. That you and I demonstrate how we live our lives to make an impact that people can see the difference in our hearts and in the way that we live. And we want to show the world that our God is a righteous God. And the way we show that our God's righteous is by the way we live. We, we demonstrate the, the God that we serve by the actions of our life. And, and so often we forget that. And I want to challenge you. Every day of your life. I mean, you put on that breastplate of righteousness. So that you can make a difference. And that you can demonstrate to people. What it means to be right with God. And if we'll do that each day of our life. What a difference it'll make. You know, what a difference it'll make in the way we treat other people. If you and I, knowing that the Word of God says that you and I are to love each other as we love ourselves, or do unto others as we'd have others do unto us, that you and I would demonstrate it, that we would show that every day of our life. Think of what an impact that would make to people who'd say, well, their God really is a loving God. Their God is a God who really does the right things because they live it every day of their life. And it's out of their heart. It comes out of our heart how you and I live. It doesn't come out of our mind. It comes out of our hearts. 
And if our hearts are closer to him, then we're going to see a difference as we live that out. Believing, showing the world what it means to walk with Jesus. Every day, pray, putting on the belt of truth. Every day, putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Because you need the truth, you need to stand in the truth, but you also need to live it. Every day of our life, demonstrate who God is. I again bring you back to this. Paul was speaking to Christians. And he said, you know, live the way you ought to live. Demonstrate it. Let your life be an impact in the lives of people. Let it make a difference. Wherever you go and whatever you do, let your heart and your life make a difference for him. What a challenge that would be for you and me. Man, out of my life, I want to protect it. I want to protect my heart so that I can live the way he would have me to live that I can make an impact in this world. We as God's people need to make an impact. And I believe the only way we can make that impact is to live that gospel, to live what we say we believe every day of our life. Live it. Demonstrate it. Let others see Jesus in you. The songwriter knew exactly what he was saying. When he said that, let others see Jesus in you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, God, that your word is alive. And Lord, I pray that we would guard our hearts and protect them so that we could live the way you want us to live. That we don't let sin just dominate us. We don't let sin control us. We let your Holy Spirit, as we yield to your Spirit, and we live the way that you would have us to live. Let us demonstrate it each and every day. Father, I pray for your people. As they go forth every day in this community, let them live for you. Let them demonstrate who you are. Father, I pray for this church. I love these people. Lord, I pray that you will bless them and use them to your glory and honor. And may they serve you and may they work together with their new pastor to accomplish the things that you would have them to do. Go with us. Bring us together at the appointed hour. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week in the Lord.